Hello, Monday. I'm going to go off this one chart from the Financial Times today and ask a general question of you all. If you can put your, put your thinking hats on and uh, try and work out what the answer is. Basically what we've got here are uh, monies coming into UK households over the generations. Now there's lots wrong with it. I'll set you up with a little story. Um, two, three years ago, and before then, I used to go um, to England every year to see the relations. And I used to go up to Paris, uh, Paris, uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport, and fly to England from there. Now, that was the airport that you go into if you want to go to Euro Disney. And so for a few years, generally, I'd line up getting on the aircraft to go to England with lots of people that were coming back from Euro Disney families. And there's one particular one, there's obviously lots of them, but there's one particular family that's stuck in my mind. There were five children, mother and father, and um, they were horrible. Absolutely horrible brought out the absolute snob in me you know they were just in front of me and it was a long queue and we shuffled forward for about 15 minutes and I was watching the antics of this family and it was just horrible and I was basically thinking these people should not be let left to go on aircraft they should just be kept in England they shouldn't leave the country you know the the eldest was about the girl was about 11 or something like that and she was just an apprentice slut like a mother and it was just a horrible thing and I was thinking well where do they get the money from for all this it must have cost a little fortune to take these little princes and princesses who didn't know what the hell they were going to see to Disney and they'll get their little well, they were stocked up with all sorts of nasty plastic pink Disney things that they just take home stack on their shelves in their bedroom and then the next day forget all about it and I was thinking where do they get all this money from I mean and it wasn't uh, my experience showed me that it wasn't that this was a one-off family that had won the lottery or anything it was generally that um, working class family with large children's can just jump on aeroplanes and go to Euro Disney uh, as a normal ish thing and I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't just one of their continental holidays of the year because that would have been in the winter time anyway that's just to set us up for this financial time stuff now I'll read across the top but it's all a bit non-exact let's put it that way but it's going to give us a good indication and we can ask questions from it it says it's median household disposable income median household so that's quite interesting disposable income in pounds per week in 2009-10 prices it's before housing costs and the incomes are adjusted for household size so they've tried to do something here but it's far from anything really household costs um, aren't in there um, they're adjusting for household sizes and it's a household not personal there's a lot wrong with this information well I would have preferred it to be slightly different but it is what we've got and I think it is quite instructive right we'll go back down if you'd follow me this way to the bottom right to the yellow one the elderly poor now no longer with us, born in uh, 1895 to 1904. Generally, all of them are dead. Now longer, no longer with us, those born around the turn of the last century found old age came with meagre living standards, very meagre living standards. Some of us are old enough to know these people um, when they were living and generally they were all very poor. So we jump a generation, the 1905s to the 1915 people, they're in their 90s now. Now predominantly in their 90s, rising median incomes of this group, old age reflects differential mortality. Um, 
that's the darker blue line that towards the end is pointing upwards now now that's pointing upwards because the poor ones that were 90 are all dead it's only the rich ones now that are 90 that are surviving the beverage beneficiaries uh, these people are in their 80s now uh, the first to benefit significantly in retirement from the post-war welfare state as envisaged in the 1942 so they're getting their welfare benefits they've had the welfare state all through their life and they're getting uh, standard pensions and all that and basically the first one we can just say although it's been true for all the others just generally cruise over the top of everybody else and are well well clear towards now and have been through their retirement years well clear higher with much higher disposable income than the people that, that existed in that now are in their 90s in other words the light green is well over the level of the light uh, of the dark blue yeah if you're following along so the ones in their uh, 70s now they struggled to start with they were very flat all the way up to the, to age 40 they weren't doing very well um, a generation that was squeezed in the 60s and 70s but really found their prime in the f in their 40s under margaret thatcher you can see from along the bottom is their actual age group as the head of household and uh, it's about 36 38 when they were still flat from where they'd started working and then it really took up off from 38 till their age 52 and then it's been down ever since but they got a good enough boost the dark greens to keep them well above and over the top of the light greens but they've been coming down to meet the light greens um, for a long time since the end of that boost the pink people who are in their 60s they're just coming up to retirement the boomer generation had a bad start in the uk due to the inflation of the 70s and 80s but then took off and uh, entering retirement better off than the previous generation but it had a tough time in their 20s in the high inflation of the 70s and you can see they're over the top now of the dark greens okay so that was the um 60s people in their 50s me in that funny sort of color 55 64 just holding over the the last generation but touched it right up towards the top now are we going to get over the top of the pink and fly away and have a wonderful retirement this is where i'm starting to think we're probably not but it's it's a long it's a big call because every other generation at our time of life if you look 50 55 60 65 they're well ahead of the previous generation with much more disposable income so those are the 50s the people in the four their 40s now in purple uh yeah the, if you read down there to age 42 now born between 1965 and 74 they're struggling uh and have been for the last eight years to really get some upward momentum going they've taken a little kick up from our generation towards that in the last couple of years to try and get up north of us but without that kick up it looked like they were going to crash into us and i think they'll be struggling to get up and over the top of us and if they don't get under the top top of us I, I wouldn't be surprised if they'll go and go through the pink line as well and maybe even follow the green line down the people now in their 30s born between 75 and 84 have had a damn good time of it now this no, it wouldn't have been quite my family because it was a bit back there it would have been a purple family but lots of families now that these orange people aged about 35 have had one hell of a good time they've they've absolutely zoomed out of the blocks and are still well ahead of the born in 65 to 74 generation now the quit i'll throw the question in now before we get to the red people why what's what's going on because this isn't just the uk we can say the U, uh, united states france germany 
Australia anywhere. These sort of uh, lines will pertain. This, this this sort of thing will be everywhere. There might be one or two countries that will have really quirky things in that will make it that this isn't quite right for. The, but generally, we'll find this sort of strata across the whole Western world. We can say why, I'm saying why particularly on that orange generation that find themselves at 32 now. They've had a wondrous time. They've been paid huge quantities of money. This is before housing prices are taken into account. We must, we must say that. But why? Why is it so, why do, they, I'm, I'm not moaning about it. Or, you know, but why have they got so much disposable income? Why are they being paid so much? Because they are. And have been. They are doing have been doing jolly well. Now, it could all flatten off and go horribly wrong because it looks like those coloured lines are bunching at the top there. But if the past is anything to go by, something will happen to make them all go up and flow away and nicely. But why? It'll be something to do with globalization or something to do with um, digitalization, something like that. There will be a reason why those orange people are doing so well. And that it'll have to be based on why every succeeding generation has done better than the generation before. They weren't stupid, these old people, back in yellow, blue and green. They, they were really bright, and it could be said that their schooling was an awful lot better than the modern-day schooling. Uh, they were capable of many things, but obviously the world did not stretch them to do these things and pay them accordingly. But the modern people are getting lots. Except the last one, the red one, born between 85 and 94, they're, they're, not, they're following the line of the orange people, but are really behind the curve. It says they're calling them the jinx generation, but I don't think they're doing that badly. The first generation not to have higher living standards than those born 10 years earlier. Now they're struggling. Now is this the start of the end of all this doing so much better than the uh, born 10 years before you? But the big question is why? What has made it so these each subsequent Decca Decca generation is doing really so much better than the one before? And is it starting to stop now? I'll leave that with you. Hope it inspires some thinkings and see you in the comments because I'm I've got some ideas that I'll put out this week. It's, it's something. You tell me what. Bye.